section 30.6, the Pauli exclusion principle and the periodic table of the elements. So if, as we look at increasing n value, in general, what we'll see is that the energy increases as n gets larger. There are a few exceptions where if you, as you get to larger n's, you can have larger L values. And as the L gets large enough, sometimes it will overlap the lowest L value of the previous, of the next highest state. So in the n equals three, notice the L equals two gets to a higher energy level than the L equals zero of the n equals four state. So this is a plot of the higher you go, the higher the energy. So in general, lower n, lower energy, but it's also the L value will make, start to make some difference in that energy level. Another important principle is known as the Pauli exclusion principle. And this says that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of values for the four quantum numbers. Every electron is a true individual, right? It has to be different, can't just be like everyone else. They all have to be unique in their own special way. They have to have their own set of quantum numbers. They can have overlapping quantum numbers, but at least one of those quantum numbers needs to be different. So what this means is that given the possible quantum numbers, there's a maximum number of electrons within each subshell. So at the n equals one state, we're limited to L equals zero and M sub L equal to zero. So that only leaves two possible states of the spin up or spin down, plus one half, minus one half. So there's only two electrons that can fit in that n equals one, l equals zero state. And actually every time l equals zero, we can only have two electrons. It's only when l starts to become larger, like when l is equal to one, now m sub l could be negative one, zero, or positive one, and so that introduces three with two states within each of those, it introduces six possible states. And so it increases as your L gets larger, you're going to get more possible electrons within a subshell. So with this in mind, we can determine the ground states of atoms in example eight here. So which of the energy levels in the figure are occupied by the electrons in the ground state of hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium and boron. So these are the first uh, few atoms. And this is something that I don't expect you to have their atomic numbers memorized or the number of electrons that each of them have memorized. But being able to fill in uh, and understand how the energy levels fill up is an important process. So let's take a look here. Hydrogen has just one electron. And so it's going to go in the lowest energy in its ground state. So it can fill in there, cool. Helium now has two, and there's two possible states in that n equals one, l equals zero. Great. Lithium, we're now up to three. So that third one can't stay in the lowest energy. The third electron needs to be at a higher energy level. It needs to go up to n equals two, l equals zero. Similarly for beryllium, when we add another electron to the mix, it can fill in that higher state. It'll have to have the opposite spin. So with those two pairs in the beryllium, right, each of them will have one that's plus one half, one that's minus one half, because they all have four different quantum numbers. And finally with boron, in the L equals zero state, even at N equals two, it can still only take two electrons. So the fifth electron will have to go up to the next energy level. So we can follow this process of filling in one electron, you know, as many as we can as we're building up the, each of the ground states of the atoms. And so this is what's done in a periodic table. So you can look, you've probably seen periodic tables before, um, but each of the elements has their symbol shown, right, the two letter combination, the atomic number, which is the number of protons, the atomic mass, which is very close to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Electrons are tiny compared to them. Uh, and so this is always a decimal because it's not exactly any integer number of them. And then the configuration of the outermost electrons. So this says 3p6. Well, what does that mean? Well, it turns out it's a code. 
So the first number is the n value. So 3 here is n equals 3. Uh, in the example below, it says 2p5. The 2 is n equals 2. Now, what's this p? Well, it turns out that's a code uh, for the orbital quantum number. So we can look at this handy table. And the orbital quantum number of 1 corresponds to the letter p. L is equal to 0 corresponds to the letter s. 2 corresponds to d. 3 corresponds to f and so on and so forth. I'm not sure where this convention came from, but it's what's commonly used. So the orbital quantum number isn't always explicitly stated, but it's implied. So if you know that you're in the 3p6 state, then you know that you're at n equals 3, l is equal to 1. And then the final number is the number of electrons within that subshell. So if you have six electrons within that subshell, or you could have five electrons within that subshell. And so this is how the periodic table was built, was looking at how you can keep adding electrons and filling up the different subshells. Right, so here uh, are the element numbers, right? We did the first five one uh, up through boron. And we can write the configuration of the electrons in this code, right, where we have the n value, where we have the l value with an s or a p or a d, but none here are shown with a d. And then we have the number of electrons that have filled that energy level. So let's check our last example, right? We have 1s1. There's only one electron, hydrogen, in this ground state. For helium, there's now two electrons in that ground state. Lithium, there still are the two electrons in the lowest n equals 1, l equals 0 state, but now there's an electron at the next highest state, at the n equals 2 state. Beryllium, we have two there. Boron, we have the bottom two levels filled, but now we have another electron at the next level up, which is now l equals 1, the p state. And there's only one electron there. We can keep adding electrons until that level gets full and then keep adding and increasing levels until we've built the entire periodic table, right? So the periodic table, we have hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron. Those are those five again, right? Where we're filling it one by one as we're going through. And you can even look at the higher up ones like copper. Uh, and so this one, instead of writing out the entire electron configuration, which gets really long, they sometimes do see there's argon in brackets here. Argon is the last one of the column on the right that has been completely full. That's part of the noble gases is the electron configuration is very stable, very set. And then anything beyond argon is added on here. So 3D10 or S1. And that's actually a really neat little example there, but uh, where it's more stable having one in the 4s1 state. So there you can have hopefully a slightly better understanding of the periodic table, where these mysterious numbers came from, uh, and how they can show the electron configuration, which is highlighted by the quantum mechanical picture of the atom, where we have these quantum numbers that work together.